Welcome to Summit Kids. We're so glad that all of you are joining us this morning. Today, we're talking about trusting God and obeying His Word. We've got so many fun things planned. And we're gonna have s'mores! Yes! Yes! S'mores! I love s'mores! <laughs> yes, we're gonna make s'mores. Enjoy the service. It's game time! Today, we're playing the Speedy Swap. Once Speedy just hit a ball behind her back, and once they all start running around, they're gonna be swapping the ball. And when they stop, you're gonna guess who's hiding it behind their back. Can you find it? Let's go. Okay, Speedies, begin the game. There they go. They're going fast. They're passing the ball around. Can you tell who has it, Deb? No idea. They dropped the ball. Make sure you're watching the ball. Concentrate. They stopped. Okay, let's see. If you think Speedy number one on the left side has the ball, jump up and down. The Speedy that's waving his hand, if you think he has the ball, jump up and down. If you think Speedy number two, then spin in a circle. Spin, spin. And if you think Speedy number three, then scream really loud. Really loud. Okay, let's see who has it. Speedy number two. Speedy number two. If you spun in a circle, then you won this Good round. Job. Good job. Now the Speedies are gonna go again. Make sure you're paying close attention to the ball. There they Going go. Faster. They're passing the ball back and forth. Are you guys watching it? No. Are you following that ball, Deb? I can't find it. I don't think I can I follow it. it They're so speedy, they've wow. stopped. Okay, once again, if you think speedy number one has the ball, spin in a circle. If it's, if it's number two, then jump up and down. And if you think number three, then do a dance move. Okay, let's see who has it. Number three. Speedy number three had it this time. If you got speedy number three, then you won this round. Great Everybody job. Everybody dance. Everybody dance. Good job. There they go again. Wow, they're so speedy. I oh, can't even follow the it. They threw it. Look at that passing. They're so talented. Look so at fast. them go so fast. Where is the I ball? can't even follow it. They stopped again. Okay, if you think it's speedy number one, do a dance move. There he is. If you think it's number two, then jump up and down. Jump up and down. There we go. And Speedy number three, scream really loud. Really loud. Let's see who has it. It's number Speedy number two. two. Good job, guys. Thanks for playing. That was fun. Stand up for worship. Let's warm up. Ready? Hop on one foot. Shores. <laughs> now hop on the other foot. Good job. It's not a secret. It's not a fairy tale. It's not made up. Jonah was in a whale. Three whole days. One, two, three. The greatest treasure. The word God's people wrote. It's in the Bible. When Noah built a boat. And it rained and rained. Are you ready? The rain rolls in the sky to show God.
great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He is higher than a skyscraper. For this song, I really want you guys to just enjoy being in God's presence. Find a place to spread out. You can lay down. You can just worship. But I want you to pray and enjoy talking to God because he loves to hear your voice. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, my feet may fail. I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand Feel 
God, we thank you for your presence and how you're moving in our lives. Help us to learn more about you today. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us, guys. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Welcome to our TED Talk. I love reading the Bible. Me too. What are you putting together? My telescope. Cool. Do you need the instructions? No, no, I got it. Are you sure? You might put it together wrong. No, I got it. Okay, I think you'll get it right. But imagine you're putting together equipment for a surgery. Would you want instructions for that? Uh, yeah, that's life or death. Exactly. As I was reading the Bible, I realized that it seems like an instruction manual from God. And that when we obey it, it'll help us to live our best life possible. That's so cool. I know, right? Are you sure you don't need the instructions? Probably should. Probably. What? This is for our toaster. A toaster? Mega Bear probably did this. Mega Bear. S'mores. Hi, my name is Zara. I'm doing Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. He will make your path straight. I want to start first by saying Happy Mother's Day. And kids, if you haven't told your moms that yet, turn around right now and say Happy Mother's Day. In fact, if you haven't done anything special for them yet, then after this lesson is over, I want you to go over and draw something cool for her or make something really nice for her lunch because today is her day. And do something very special for her because you know what? She does things special for you all the time. Isn't that right? That's right. So now today, you know, we're talking about trusting in the Lord and obeying God's word. You know, it says in the Bible to obey your mom and dad. So when you obey your mom and dad, then you are showing that you trust in the Lord. You're showing that you trust in him, right? And, you know, if you disobey God or disobey your mom and dad, then things don't quite go quite right. Is that right? Speaking of not going quite right. When I was a little kid, <laughs> one night I, I went to sleep. Have you guys ever like laid on your arm or, or your hand or something and it went completely dead asleep? Well, that happened to me one night. One night I was sound asleep and it was probably uh, later in the winter, so it was kind of cool out, right? And I laid on my arm and it went completely dead. It was so like I couldn't feel it at all. But of course I was asleep, didn't know. I rolled over as I was sleeping like this and when I did my arm flopped over right on my chest and when my arm since I couldn't feel it it was like cold and there was this hand laid on my my chest I woke up I was like oh, oh who's this 
And I grabbed my arm and I pulled it. And when I yanked my arm, I yanked it real hard, I pulled myself right out of the bed, like, whoa! And I laid on the floor. Now, I was sharing my room with my both my brothers. They're in bunk beds on the other side of the room. And here I was on the floor, I was wrestling with my arm, like, ah, get off of me! Let go of me! And I was like, my wrestling my own arm, because I couldn't feel, I didn't know it was my own arm. And then my brother, he like, leaned over and clicked on the light, he goes, Stuart, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, lay on the floor going, there's this, uh, there's this, uh, uh, my hand, uh, uh, nothing. And I crawled back into my bed, <laughs> a little embarrassed, felt a little kind of dumb. But that's the way it is when things, when you don't do what is right. When you disobey God or disobey mom and dad, things aren't going quite right and you end up doing things that you really shouldn't do. Kind of like wrestling with an arm that's my own arm. Well, why don't you guys enjoy another uh, version of the kids doing our verse for today, and then I'll be back and tell you the Bible story in a minute. Lena here. Uh, we are reading Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. In today's Bible story, we're talking about a man by the name of Jonah. And he was a prophet of God. His job was to tell people what God said when God said it, right? Now, God had a mission for Jonah. He wanted him to go somewhere. You see, there was these people, people that lived in a land called Nineveh. Now, these people in Nineveh had been making a lot of mistakes. They've been doing a lot of things wrong. You know how we were talking about obeying God earlier? Well, these people had been disobeying. See, God wanted, be, wanted them going this direction, but the whole country were all going the opposite direction. They were all disobeying him. But God wanted to show mercy on the people of Nineveh. He wanted to forgive them. He wanted to change their lives. So he wanted to send Jonah to them to tell them about him so that they would change their lives. Now, Jonah, he didn't like the people of Nineveh. Didn't like them at all didn't like him. But God had told him to do something. So Jonah got in his boat and he went the other direction. God said go over there to see the, the Ninevites and he went the opposite direction. He didn't. He disobeyed God. That showed that he did not trust the Lord because if you trust the Lord you obey him, right? Well, he was showing, well, that he was going to go the other direction. Well, God sent a big storm. A huge storm, gigantic storm. The, the waves were crashing and it was making the boat just shake all over the place. And the people on the boat were all scared, like, oh no, I think the boat's gonna sink. But they found out, well, Jonah told them, well, the storm is my fault because I'm running away from God. So if you just take me and throw me in the ocean, then the storm will end. Well, that's what Jonah was thinking, but God had other plans. See, God had already sent a big fish, and he was following underneath the boat. So when they threw Jonah off, off the boat, he landed in the water, and the fish went, whoa, boom, claw, swallowed Jonah up, swallowed him up whole. And then the storm completely stopped right there. You imagine being on that boat with those sailors, and the boat's like, oh, no, and all, boom, the storm stops. That must have been wild for those guys. And imagine what it was like for Jonah when he's inside that fish. Here he was, thrown in the water, and all of a sudden, gulp, he's swallowed by a fish and being taken down, 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 deep in the water. And he's inside this fish thinking, what just happened to me? Well, he was in that fish for three days. See, God was taking the fish to Nineveh. You see, God had a plan for the people of Nineveh, and he loved the people of Nineveh. So he really wanted Jonah to go there, no matter what Jonah was saying, just like, well, our mom and dad, when they tell us to do something, sometimes they're like, hmm, you're gonna do it no matter what you think. You said you're not gonna do it, you're gonna do it. You're gonna obey me one way or the other. So isn't it better just to obey in the first place? I think so. Well, Jonah's inside the whale, three days. He starts to pray. I think I would pray too if I was stuck inside of a whale, especially for three days. He's inside that whale thinking, I don't know what's going on. He's talking to God. Well. God brings the, the big old whale, the big old fish, to the, the shore 
of, of Nineveh, right there on the beach. And then the whale starts going, hula, 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 and blah, and he throws up Jonah right on the beach. Splat, he lands on the ground. He's covered in all kinds of junk that was inside the belly, his stomach, and he's like, he smells, he looks bad, and he's like, oh, covered in all this slime, and he's, he's kind of grumpy. He's like, okay, here I'm in Nineveh. I don't really like the people of Nineveh. I'll go tell them what God said. And he's walking through the city. He's like, God's going to destroy this city. God's going to destroy the whole thing. Unless you change your ways and turn, yourself, turn back to God. Now, Jonah didn't think they were going to do it. You see, he didn't like them so much that he thought in his heart, in his mind, that they weren't going to change. That they were just going to be the way they were. So he didn't really care about them. But you know who really did care about them? God cared about the people of Nineveh. He cared very much for them. Just like he cares for me and he cares for you. He cares very much. Well, the people of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying. Even though he wasn't saying it very nicely, he was still speaking what God wanted him to say. They heard his words and it touched their hearts. And they knew what they were doing was wrong. They knew they were going the wrong direction. Just like Jonah, when he was like, decided to get in that boat, he was going the wrong way. God turned them around and sent it back the other direction, right? They wanted to change their ways. They decided to change what they were doing. And everybody began to say, God, we're sorry. Even all the way up to the king of Nineveh, all of them changed their ways. And they all asked God to forgive them. Well, Jonah went up to the top of the hill and he said, I'm going to watch God destroy this city. going to just watch it be destroyed. And he sits there on the edge of the city and he's like, ah, I'm going to wait for God to destroy it. Here we go. Just sit, sit right here. And while he's sitting there, God caused a plant to kind of grow up right over Jonah's head. Nice big shade plant because it was really hot that day. As he's sitting there all grumpy and then a the nice shade over his head, he began to feel kind of good. Like, ah, oh, that shade feels real nice. Well, then God then sent a worm, a little worm. And the worm starts eating the roots. <laughs> Start eating the roots of the plant. And when it does, the plant falls down dead. Whoopsh! Then Jonah gets angry, like, oh, oh, my shade plant just died. I can't believe it. I've been sitting up here all day waiting for God to destroy this city. And what happens? Nothing happens. Just the plant dies. And God says, hold on a second. Listen here, Jonah. You care more about that plant than you care about these people. You see, Jonah, I love these people. I want them to change their ways. You see, God wants the same for you. You know the amazing thing about God? Even when we make mistakes, he still loves us, which was proven when God sent Jonah to speak to the Ninevites. Even though they were making lots of mistakes, God still wanted to forgive those people. And when we make mistakes, our moms and dads, they love us still. They might get a little upset, but they still love us very much. See, God wants us to obey Him and to obey our parents. He wants us to trust in Him. And when we trust in Him, obey His Word. Sometimes that's easy. Sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes we make mistakes. But when we make mistakes, we just need to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Will you please forgive me and please help me? You know what? Let's pray right now. All right. Wait, close your heads and bow your eyes. Lord God, I ask that you help all of us to trust in you and also to obey your word. And when we make mistakes, Lord God, help us to turn back to you and say, God, forgive me for what I did wrong. And sometimes when we're having a hard time, I ask that you bring somebody alongside of us to give us wisdom and direction, like our parents or a good friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we love you guys, and we're praying for you. And you know what? We're going to enjoy some s'mores. I wonder where my friend Graham is, because he's been talking all morning about, about some s'mores. I know he'd love to join us and have some s'mores. Hey, Graham, Graham, where are you at? Well, I'm sure he'll show up in a minute. See you guys. Here you go, Graham. Made some s'mores for you. Yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna eat a ton of these.